As we do every month, this video is brought to you by Max Aroma, bringing you maximum aroma since whenever they started. Max Roma is a fantastic distributor of a wide variety of designer and niche fragrances. You guys already know this, many of you have already shopped with them, so I don't need to tell you, but I'm telling you because that's what we do in videos. We tell you things. They have a fantastic rewards program. If you are someone who likes to shop frequently, they have a great way to sample fragrances by offering decants, these awesome leather wrapped decants for most of their fragrances. So you don't have to commit to full bottles every time. And they're also running great deals most of the time, great discounts and sales and all that good stuff, stuff you like. So I'm going to have a link down to Max Roma in the description. Do check them out and you can find all the fragrances we'll talk about at that link. This is what we call one of those other side of the coin videos. We did an underrated niche fragrances video where I took eight well-known niche brands and chose what I believe to be one of the most underrated offerings from each of those brands and put them all in a video. It was a good time. Today is the designer version. I've chosen just eight designer brands. I could do more. If you guys want to see another installment, then we can do that, but it's up to you. We have eight brands, brands that you know, maybe you love, maybe you don't know, and therefore you can't know if you love them, but be glad you found this video because you can discover some new things today. These fragrances are not getting regular talk today in the community and most of the time they are being overshadowed by more popular offerings from each of these brands and that's simply why they're underrated. Overshadowed, underrated, you get the idea, they work together sometimes. Let's dive right into it in no particular order. From Tom Ford, I believe this fragrance is underrated and overshadowed because of fragrances like Noir Extreme or Noir Extreme Parfum and especially Ombre Leather. Good Lord. Everyone's talking about ombre leather still. Great scent. But let's turn our attention back to the Noir collection. There would be no Noir Extreme or Noir Extreme Parfum if there was no Noir. The OG. Now it is funny that this is the originator of the line because the flankers of Noir, maybe aside from the anthracite flanker, none of them smell anything like this in terms of character. They're all way more appealing, way more accessible. This is another monster. This was a fragrance that I hated when I first tried it. I've said this before. The first and one of very few negative reviews on my channel was of this fragrance, but I knew I'd come back around to it as the years went by, and I certainly did. This is a foggy, damp fragrance. There is a lot of patchouli, a little bit of rose. There's this bitter resinous feel like a myrrh resin, but it's covered in a damp earthiness. And again, there's this gothic foggy feeling to the scent, but it comes off pretty soft, understated, which makes it very handsome, perhaps a little bit easier to wear, especially if you don't overspray it. But it's a strange scent profile. I understand why people are overlooking this. Those of you who've been in the game for a bit, maybe you tried this years back like me, didn't work for you, I would encourage you to try it again. This may not be a daily wear, but if it vibes with your personality, ironically enough, it could be a signature scent, at least if you're asking me. That is Tom Ford Noir. Eau de Parfum, that is. There's an Eau de Toilette as well, which I think is a little harder to find, but Eau de Parfum, this is the OG. Raise your hand if you are familiar with the Valentino Uomo flankers as they are today. We're talking about Coral Fantasy and Yellow Dream and Born in Roma. I don't even know all of them. They're really head scratching to me, but it's clear what their audience is. They're looking for younger guys and they found them. That young rebel who wants to smell sweet and playful and even sexy, but doesn't realize that he's too young to be worrying about smelling sexy. Just get your homework done on time. But we couldn't talk about any of those fragrances without the originator, the original Womo. Not necessarily an originator of this type of fragrance. I don't think this would exist without the Dior Homme collection, which was created by renowned perfumer Olivier Polge, who also created this one. Could be one of those instances where Valentino approached him and said, hey, that thing you did with Dior. Do that. And I respect that. I've said that many times. That is one thing I respect. I don't think that is blatantly copying or ripping off because it's the same perfumer. It's the same creative mind with a different sensibility in two different arenas. It's his work. So I appreciate that. This takes that vibe, that Dior Homme vibe, not quite as powdery and floral forward. It's a little bit more on the gourmand side of things, more of like a chocolatey hazelnut feel with this supple, soft leather. It is sweet and woody. It is delicious smelling. Again, more gourmand. On, whereas the Dior has a little bit of chocolate in it from that cacao, but definitely more on the floral side, more on the lavender iris side of things, a little bit of that supple leather behind it too. So ultimately kind of a different animal, maybe a little bit more accessible for most people. If you didn't like Dior Homme, 
you might like Valentino Uomo. I highly recommend it for fall and winter, for evening occasions, date night, going out when you want to smell appealing but interesting. This is a great option. Do check this one out. Again, you can get it at Max Roma linked down below. That is Valentino Uomo or man. Yep. When we think of Hermes, we often think of today, the Ter Hermes collection, which I am a huge fan. It's a timeless collection. It's been around for almost 20 years now. They've been making flankers and been doing a damn good job of it, if you're asking me. So I understand how it is a mammoth in the industry and will easily overshadow most other offerings the brand has and is currently doing. This fragrance definitely lies in what I might call a dead collection. It had one fragrance and then this was the flanker and that's it. They banded it all together. If they bring it back, we'll see. But I think this is worth looking into. I understand how it's underrated because it's not for everyone. This is from the Voyage d'Hermes line. And this is the Parfum Flanker, perhaps the final flanker, the one that killed the collection. That sounds morbid, but you get the idea. Jean-Claude Elena, masterful work, as he did with all creations he's done, especially from Hermes. Green, fresh, spicy, warm, spicy as well. Woody, dark, and damp in a way. I remember smelling this in stores years ago when it was still available. Ran away from it. Ran for the hills. Not too different from Tom Ford Noir. I've come back around to it once again. Taste can change, becomes more refined, and now this is in my taste. What I love about this scent is that it wears subtle. Some of you might already be skipping to the next fragrance. You're not looking for subtlety, but just like you have variety in your wardrobe, wearing a t-shirt versus wearing a wool sweater, wearing a loud print collared shirt versus wearing just a regular polo, everything has a function. Very classy stuff, very natural smelling, but because it's so specific, not gonna be for everyone. When you establish a definitive lane, you narrow the net and thus you leave a lot of people out. This is not going to cater to everyone's taste, but I dig this stuff. Hermes kind of abandoned it, but I'm here to let you know that it's worth going back for. Hermes Voyage d'Hermes Parfum. Some people call it the pencil sharpener. Smells good though. La Lique, kind of an underrated brand in general. If you like the Uncre Noir line, that's probably what you think of when you think of La Lique. This one, not completely unknown, but nowhere near as talked about today as the Uncre Noir line, which is a great line, but we're talking about Ombre Noir. A special scent perfect for fall and winter, maybe even spring too. This is warm, spicy cinnamon with booze and woods. A little bit of a fresh, tropical, alcoholic drink vibe, but there is this warmth, it's spicy, it's deep, it's rich, it's autumnal, it's woody and dry, all coexisting together. A very interesting fragrance that is super easy to wear. I think it could be casual or a little bit more classy, day or night. I think it's worth checking out. Uncre Noir, again, good stuff. Maybe a little bit weird for some people, but I think it's a special collection, but Ombre Noir, which I don't believe has any flankers, it's like the only of its kind, is worth checking out. So check it out. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. This next fragrance is not what I would call special. It is underrated. It's definitely worth checking out if you like the idea of something that's simple and easy to wear with good performance, but it's not groundbreaking by any means. But I do believe it is a fantastic addition to its collection. From Mont Blanc, we have Legend Eau de Parfum. Came out a few years ago. When it came out, similar to many other brand new designer releases from popular collections in terms of flankers, it got a little bit of press from the reviewers, again, right at release. But after that, no one's really talking about it. At the very least, if we can base that on its special qualities, I understand. Again, not special. But in the context of the Legend collection, it's good stuff. Takes that familiar, fresh, almost green, metallic, violet leaf feel. Very fresh, musky, kind of smell a little bit like shower gel. Remove that apple. You don't really have a strong fruity presence here in a way that makes it maybe a little bit less juvenile. Not necessarily mature, but sweetness is gone. You do with that what you will. It's simple. This is day or night. This is dressed up or down. This is maybe a compliment magnet if that matters to you and if you approach it in the right way. But nonetheless, easily overlooked by Explorer. I don't really care for Explorer. That's just me. But I'd rather wear a Ventus over Explorer. So pivoting from Explorer, that is Mont Blanc Legend Eau de Parfum. Let me know if you dig this one. And if you haven't tried it, it's at Max Roma, link down below. When you think of Paco Rabanne, what do you think of? That gold bullion, one million and they release a new flanker every six minutes, it seems. But what you don't think of, I can almost guarantee, is this, XS. Now this is a 2018 reformulation, which 
from what I understand, is not terribly different from its original version, which I believe came out in the 1990s. A classic, timeless, simple scent profile. It's clean, very clean, very much 1990s type of cleanliness. Fresh and aldehydic, almost like clean laundry or soap. Very uplifting and bright and airy, but with this characteristically masculine feel, a muskiness that just smells like guy. It's an easy to wear scent for the gym. It's an easy to wear scent out the shower, running errands, sitting at home. Definitely casual vibes here though. Would not dress this up. So not necessarily all that special, but easily overlooked for being a solid scent that's easy to wear. Check out Excess from Paco Rabanne. Now, similar to the Mont Blanc and many other modern designer flanker releases, when this fragrance came out earlier this year, 2023, it got some press. There were some initial reviews, some first impressions, quite a variety of opinions on this one, but nonetheless, since that time, crickets. No one's really talking about this. I came to it late. I just got this a couple months ago. I'm peeking my head out the hole. Is anyone talk about this thing still? Because it's good. From Cartier, Pasha Noir Absolu. Easily overlooked to this day by the Parfum Flanker, which is a masterpiece of a flanker. What a Parfum Flanker should be. Love that stuff. And I'm sure you do too, but it's not for everyone. This is even more not for everyone. This is not what you would expect from this line. Maybe a tiny bit of the Pasha DNA can be found at the core of this. But overall, this is like smoky caramel. Smoky caramel. Weird. I'll be honest, I'm not sure what they were thinking. This is what I would call a niche fragrance in a designer bottle. This is not a mainstream scent at all. There's almost this booziness to it as well. Maybe it's an illusion. You might smell this and you might go, I don't know what to do with this. But wear it on your skin and watch it work its magic. It's not a strong fragrance. It will last. I was finding it lasting at least 10 hours on my skin, but sitting pretty close, which I find to be the best thing for this because if this was loud, it would be disgusting. A scent profile that's a little bit head tilting, a little strange like this. When you turn it up to 11, <laughs> the subtlety in this one in terms of projection is in its favor. And because of its weirdness, as I just described, I understand why it's underrated, but I think it's worth your attention. If you're looking for something interesting, check this one out. Great for fall and winter. Pasha Noir Absolute. And finally, from the house of Prada, when you think of Prada these days, I think most of us think of the Luna Rosa collection, especially the new Ocean collection. I have the brand new Eau de Parfum, which I kind of like. I'm getting to know it a little bit. The Carbon Flanker, which I have. I like that one too. Maybe even the Loam collection, especially the original. That one still gets some limelight. But we don't talk about this fragrance collection. Similar to the Hermes, Voyage d'Hermes, had two renditions and then it was done. It died a quick death. This is the Amber Pour Ohm collection and this is the intense version. Prada Amber Pour Ohm intense dark gothic soap a little bit similar to the tom ford i talked about earlier but remove this fogginess you have more of a clean soapy resinous myrrh feel a little sweet in a balsamic way a little bit damp but still has a cleanliness but nowhere near as gothic smelling as the tom ford nowhere near as sleepy hollow vibes it is based on its original which is very very soapy so it does bring that with it but it does have this nighttime feel a little bit more enigmatic if you will once again, a fragrance that I did not like. All these black bottles, when they were still available, I took them for granted. I've come back around and I love them now. I don't know what's up with that. It's a beautiful coincidence. But let me know if you dig Prada Amber Pour Homme Intense. Again, not everyone's cup of tea, but if you have not even considered it, consider it. All right, well, that was fun. I want to know what you think. If you want to see other videos like this, let me know by liking this video. Leave a comment down below if you've tried any of these fragrances. And if you haven't, there's going to be a link down below to Max Roma to check them out. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.